Howdy guys, how's it going? So, got the uh, new Camp Pal tent set up, um, but not going to be putting the rain fly on it because uh, with this tent, I went with the model that has snow skirts on the rain fly. Um, so, I decided I was going to take and try to find a very nice shaded area, which I have. Uh, brought along my big bear hard 10 by 12 uh, tarp and I'm gonna be stringing that up uh, at the very beginning of this you probably seen I took a, a long stick I found and broke off a ton of uh, these lower hanging dead pine limbs so that that don't uh, won't interfere with the tarp and I want to have to kind of finagle a setup but uh, it's not going to rain uh, it's not supposed to rain for like the next week or so so uh i you know that's just keep the dew off of us and that also provide just that much more shade and uh sun protection in this here uh, video but just want to take and sit down got a nice cold pursuit energy drink i'm gonna crack this bad boy open take a couple sips very refreshing well, that guys, so today the uh, the temperature's not super bad, but it is pretty humid out. One new thing, one new piece of gear that I got, and I've got two more of these at the house that, look, if you do anything in hot weather, um, I would definitely check out these uh, Wind Rider shirts. They're like designed and marketed towards, towards like fishermen and, and boat use and stuff, but uh, hiking in, I was really worried because like this is a, uh, you know, a lightweight, thin material. But I hung it on briars and snagged it on tree limbs and stuff coming in. No holes, no tears. So uh, despite the fact it's lightweight, it does seem to be pretty durable, very, very breathable. Like you can tell just an immediate difference uh, like in your body temperature after like wearing one of these UV type shirts compared to like a cotton t-shirt. Which I mean, I'm sure most that's just common sense because cotton's going to take and just soak up all your uh, body sweat and stuff. And you got to lug it around for the duration of... Uh, your movement until you can uh, dry yourself off and sometimes when it's really humid this time of year that's not even an option but uh but the other look i mean the other cool thing this thing has a uh, a face gaiter which this is a uv uh protective shirt so like its main goal is to keep harmful uv rays off of you um but whenever i seen it i just immediately thought the thing where this face mask and this thin hood is going to be like the most beneficial is like if you're in an area where there's a lot of just really like pesky flying insects like whether it's horse flies uh mosquitoes whatever this will keep keep them from like getting into your uh your orifices as easily i don't know i really dig this shirt i know that the uh, the whole color scheme brown boots green pants and then this is a bit of a mismatch but i don't think there's any fashion police running around through the woods So yeah, this is my first time bringing out this uh, new lightweight backpacking table. This one's made by uh, FE Active, and I actually got their ultra <clears throat> ultralight low profile cot as well. My thing is, I just knew after the uh, experience how that last tent it would not fit in uh, this, or I would have tried to figure out a way to haul it in here as well. But yeah, these are really these funny out camping tables are just super cool and like really handy in my opinion. Like it's okay, so now I'm gonna take and try to uh, string up this bare hard tarp. Now there's a lot of uh, there's plenty of trees around here, but I'm going to have to get a little bit creative with how I put this up. And I did take and I replaced the tent stakes that come with the bare hard tarp. Something relatively new that they've come out with is these long titanium tent stakes. So these things weigh nothing. And they've got really nice aggressive prongs and stuff on them, so they'll definitely stay in the ground good. And like I said, the last time I used this tarp hammock camp, and I just left all of the uh, guidelines attached to it. 
And that also makes it quick and easy to know where my center line is. I just gotta figure out how I'm gonna take care of this hickory tree right here. Um, I think what I'm gonna do with it is I'm actually gonna lean it over and maybe tie it off to that tree because this right here is like mainly a pine forest and it needs thinning out really badly. Um, but I want to, <clears throat> well, I would prefer this to all be a, a, a nice hardwood forest. And I do have some of those, the rope rollers from Roller Cam. This cordage that's on that come with this tarp is pretty similar to 550 paracord. That means that these rope rollers should be able to do it. And I've only got two of them that are like kind of already connected and tied in a configuration where we used them in the last video. But I can take some off this end here. If you're not seen, if you didn't watch the last video, you can go check it out. I showed these in a much better, closer uh, detail. But they essentially just allow you to easily uh, loosen and tighten cordage. And in this case, it'll be a ridge line. So what I'm thinking is if I just take and clip this on to that. Got another big old woodpecker out here. And then now, well, that leaves us anyway, we can just kind of pull this and adjust it however we need. And that is nice and firm. Yeah, buddy, that is so quick and easy doing it that way. So this is why, like, whenever I first, when I done this tarp, I attached the, the guy lines the way that I did, so it'd be really easy to undo them and stick them on a different loop. this somehow yes this will work I'm glad to say it feels like that breeze is picking up pretty good so we're going to use one of our stakes and we we'll probably be using them back there as well I have I want to see if I can use that right there and just clip this on here like that well that's maybe that's a bungee i don't want to put that much stress on that i might tie this one i don't want to lose that right here appears to be the only lock <coughs> the only rock around which is One of these rope rollers, I'm just gonna put a little loop in it right here. And we'll just put tension on that. The stake is solid and firm. That shouldn't go anywhere. That would hold that one there. That is good and secure. That right there is sturdy enough. Just there. Clip it down to that corner. And just like that, our tarp is set up, ladies and gentlemen. Alrighty, so I think I've got my chair and this table leveled out decently well. Today, for dinner, I've got two uh, large packs of Dark Kiss uh, teriyaki chicken and a thing of mashed potatoes with garlic. 
I got my butter inside my pan here. And then I took and measured out uh, the two cups of water and I refilled this empty water bottle and brought it dedicated for the uh, potatoes. That way I don't have to mess around with measuring and things. Come on here, put that in my bag. We'll just be using our cubic alcohol stove. And I'm really happy because um, they took and come out with, with this uh, large titanium flask. And this is like going to be my dedicated uh, container for carrying around the, uh, the alcohol to use uh, in this stove. This is 70% alcohol. When, uh, whenever we went to the store, we could not find any. They were sold out at 90 proof, 91% uh, rubbing alcohol. So hopefully this 70 will be okay and not happen with whatever happened with the other one because it's uh it is dry in this area and just tons of pine needles and stuff so i don't want to uh mess around with that but this right here is a lot easier to pour out of and i mean that little plastic thing that i had was working but i, I had had it leak on me a couple times um so this is just like a much more safe and secure way to uh like to transport uh alcohol for fuel use it's going to be a small point of contact, and this thing has a wide base on it. We'll put in more than we need to. Always add more. It's got a nice, nifty little storage bag, so if you drip any uh, alcohol, just like whatever you was to have uh, in this container, you don't really have to worry about it uh, rubbing or getting on your gear. So that should have had enough time to kind of get... I guess now it's, i got matches in it. Go ahead and put this on. Oh, those two stands and set this aside because it says to boil the water before we add in that potato mix so I've got that tiny repel thing hanging too over there on that corner of the tarp that I left draping down that worked out really good um, but that one where it's smaller I might have to bring it over here this is just like the uh, this is the flattest spot in this <coughs> area that I can find Okay, there we go. It took it a it took it a second for it to uh, get itself primed up. I think I need to take and uh, soak my alcohol stove because some of the ports might be starting to get just a little bit clogged up, and where this is lower proof, a uh, lower percentage of alcohol, like they'll probably burn a little bit dirtier. Um, so after after this, I think I will soak it, and let it clean. But that should be good. I got my lid on here loose enough so we can take it off. Let's get that balanced on there. Luckily, it's not really breezy at all. In case you couldn't see a side ago, these are the uh, the potatoes that we'll be mixing up in this. And I'll just eat the chicken cold because it's really good, just straight out of that pack. Okay, so where I took and boiled this with the lid on, which normally whenever I'm cooking with this thing, I've, I've got something in there that I constantly keep stirring because titanium will conduct the heat so fast that uh, whatever you're warming up or cooking will definitely stick to the bottom if you don't keep it moving. So it has got the uh, the water to a rolling boil in, I mean, I wasn't timing it, but it was not long at all. That right there is going to be really hot. This thing was rolling and a boiling, so now we'll add our potats. We'll get these added in here. Let's get, start soaking and mixing up. We'll get our butter. The only thing. Got all our butter mixed in. These look really good. Uh, I did forget to bring any Old Bay, which is very unfortunate, or pepper. Um, the good news is I shouldn't be forgetting spices hardly at all because I'm building my own uh, like bushcraft uh, spice kit. I think I found a pouch, I ordered it, and then I found the uh, the little glass vials that I want to use uh, somewhere else. I'll show you that in greater detail. I might even do a uh, just a quick video, like that's a pretty self-explanatory thing, but like how to 
put something like that together um, because it's something that is uh, very handy. And whenever you rely on like just taking spices back and forth from, you know, like your main daily use thing and then camping gear, it's easy to forget. Cause, I mean, I do this all the time and I still forget them. Oh yeah, I'm a good, I'm a really good. But I mean, the butter is what makes them good. Oh yeah, teriyaki chicken's great. All right, well guys, I'm gonna take and <clears throat> finish eating this uh, delicious meal, and then we'll get our uh, sleep system set up. After using that last video, I just had to take and bring out the uh, this is Uba Leaves pad again because it's just so comfortable to sleep on. Okay, so I went ahead and uh, blew my pillow up. I'm just going to set it in my chair for a minute. Well, there we go and this thing right here pretty much takes up the whole inside of the floor area of this tent which is fine with me just something to be aware of get my to the top here i think that this uh pillow of mine might have a small leak in it somewhere because it feels like it's lost a little bit of air since i blew it up and that was only about five minutes ago The same one I used last time, but anyways, we're, we are on a, another slope right here, so I couldn't find a spot big enough for the tent in the shade that uh, also didn't have any trees that I needed to remove or anything. So, yeah. try not to zip up any creatures in there with us. Go ahead and get the wooby spread out in there. I'm just going to kind of open up this flap, make sure no bugs have crawled in it. Yeah, really, I mean, the only thing to keep in mind if you uh, consider a tent like this is just know your uh, comfort level and your limits when it comes to uh, the size of it. For me, like, I'm somebody, I really like using, like, a bivy and things of that nature. And, I mean, when you use a tent like this the way that we're using it, you're pretty much just using this as a as a bug bivy. Though. And there are plenty of ants around, so it is, it's a bit of a necessity if you're not using a hammock. And you could take down and pack this to half the size of what it was whenever uh, I started the video because I, I do still have the rain fly in the bag with it. Um, but if you took that rain fly out and then just, you know, had this tarp, then you've got a really nice open air covered area to chill out and sleep under. It's just if it was going to rain, you would want to make sure to uh, center this under the tarp, drop your sides down. Otherwise, the uh, the runoff and the splashback from the rain hitting the tank, like falling off the tarp and hitting the ground will come back. This thing has a high bathtub floor, um, but just from past experience using the tarp in the rain, uh, if it rains really heavy, you can even get splash up. That'll like jump up and hit the bottom of your hammock, so... There is a absolute crap ton of these granddaddy long legs crawling around. I just took and uh, walked away to uh, take a leak, but right there, that's that Ravi Vaughn uh, beacon light that uh, I showed up close in the, in the Haversack video. And that's what I'm talking about, like just walking away from camp. That's on the lowest red light setting, but it is a great way. Like, you know, you scan around, uh, makes it really easy to come back uh, to your tent area. And I mean, to be that small little light, it's uh, very bright.
And now speaking of lights, I've also got a brand new headlamp. And that's the one that I'm uh, using tonight for the very first time. So I don't know all the specs and stuff right off the top of my head. But as you guys know, the uh, Cyan Sky HS6R is like the headlamp that I've used pretty consistently for like the past six or seven months. Uh, I just seen they just had come out with their new HS7R. So this is a larger larger headlamp, larger battery, uh, more lumens. You still have the, uh, the spotlight with a bunch of different uh, brightness settings. And then you also have the floodlight, which is what I tend to use the most uh, just around camp on like keeping it on low is more than enough to do things around here is it also has a strap that goes over uh, the top of your head that's really nice if uh, you're doing some more aggressive moving around hiking up or down steep hills it just keeps it in place especially if you don't have a hat on uh, but even then sometimes it's it's nice to be able to uh, turn your hat around wear your hat backwards and have the light on so that you get plenty of light transference down like right in front of you because your bill will block some of that but we'll talk about this headlamp more in the future after I've got a chance to spend uh, more time with it. Got the, uh, turned off our beacon light. I turned the tiny rappel back on because where I've had these lights around it, starting to bring a bunch of mosquitoes and stuff. But as soon as I turned that on, it's been two minutes and most of them seem to have pretty much dispersed. I don't think that that rappel stuff really works on moss. They're still gonna be spazzing out. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put my chair out here and set my boots on it, or in it, I guess I should say. <laughs> oh, that was a good one. Oh, you gotta love the allergies, man. And I'm gonna put my sunglasses in here behind my uh, head in the uh, little storage, mesh storage thing. I'm just going to try to do this part right here pretty quick so that nothing gets in. Oh. Everything still seems to be up up nice. So yeah, I have no clue how well, if at all, you can see me now, but do that. The temperature has actually dropped off pretty nicely. Like it feels, it feels really good. Um, so in here, in the center, this does not have a hook. It just has an oh, it just has an O-ring. Not really a good way for me to put this headlamp. And normally, normally I kind of prefer to have an O-ring instead of a instead of a hook. But we'll do with it what we can there. There's a there's one of these mesh storage pockets up top and down low, so it doesn't really matter which side of this you want to use for your head. I think each end is actually similar dimensions. But anyways, I will take and just keep my headlamp right back here, I think. Oh, this sleeping pad is very comfortable. Everybody, thank you for uh, watching up until this point. I want to chill out and relax and... I would talk to y'all in the morning. Oh, good morning, guys. How's it going? Uh, so last night, the tent done really, really well. I just uh, wish there was more of a cross breeze going on because it was a very just calm and gentle night but uh you know it would have been it would have been unbearable uh to have a rain fly in this tent like you could have been naked and with those snow skirts and stuff that's on there this should it would just hold in way too much heat and not offer enough uh ventilation that's not once again that's not a slight on it because that's literally the reason why i got it the way i got it was for uh to have a tent that would be suited for a uh, colder weather <laughs> snow use and i don't know how well the video is going to show it but it's like right there there was uh, one little tick crawling on the, the mesh out here so you know i definitely have to check myself but uh, that's the beauty of having such a fine meshed screened in uh sleeping deal because uh don't have to worry about that uh, as much or at least don't have to worry about it while you're sleeping so as long as they don't latch on to you beforehand then uh, 
you should be okay. But yeah, guys, that is going to do it for this one. So as always, I really appreciate you uh, taking the time to watch the video. Please hit the thumbs up button. Subscribe if you haven't already. Share the channel with your friends, family, everybody enjoys good old outdoor activities. Because there's tons of more camping trips, adventures, uh, kayaking, just tons of stuff planned for the near future and the far future. Until the next one, guys. Adios.